Ebola got a head start on us. It is far ahead of us, it is running faster than us, and it is winning the race. We either stop Ebola now, or we face an entirely unprecedented situation for which we do not have a plan. That we can expect a new caseload of approximately 10,000 people per week by 1 December. The United Nations has weighed in on the growing Ebola crisis, and much like a lot of what emanates from that building along the East River in New York City, they were far more than a day late and a dollar short. But one thing they've said in the last few days caught our attention, the assertion that the world has 60 days or less to beat the Ebola crisis, or in their words, a lot more people will die. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about what exactly they have said, because according to the United Nations, and this in a new report issued by their health arm, the World Health Organization, the virus is running faster than us, and it is winning the race as it sweeps West Africa. Let's dig in. Welcome to Midpoint. Board certified in internal medicine and gastroenterology, who at one time accepted a position at the Mayo Clinic, Dr. David Vastola joins us today. Doctor, thanks so much for being here. It's my pleasure. Thank you. When you hear the United Nations say 60 days or else to get Ebola under control, do you think that they're, they're panicking at this point, or are they basically trying to cover themselves, saying we weren't ready for this in the first place? Well, there may be more, more than that, really. I think that uh, the reality is, is shocking for most of us, and I think that the reality of this virus is even more shocking uh, yeah, within two months, uh, that many people could die, probably even more. You know, you really have to wonder how accurate they're counting these people. I don't even think they know how many people live there, let alone how many are dying. Uh, but uh, I think they're in need of a lot of money, and that's a good way to generate a lot of money coming into the area by, by scaring, you know, the world at large. You know, it's an epidemic, and now it's here. I think, I think the real concern, however, is not there. The real concern is here. When you look at the CDC and hear many of the things that they're saying right now, a lot of it is apology at this point. As a medical professional, knowing that the CDC is there to back you up, it is the governmental agency that's supposed to be thinking of these things year in, years in advance. How disappointed and maybe even a little bit scared are you that the people who are supposed to be helping you just aren't getting the job done? They don't have your back at this point. Yeah, I think that, uh, and that's, and that's, I think the reason why most of us in, within the medical profession and also the lay population at large are frightened. Uh, the, uh, and of course the lying that's been going on for the past couple of years, you know, sits on top of all this. How much are they just lying and covering up? For example, the fiasco at, air, at the airports with this temperature taking is really a charade. Uh, they showed pictures this morning on the national news of people taking these forehead temperatures of about three or four feet away pointing these guns at people as they walk by why is that a charade then doctor why is that why is that useless it's useless for a number of reasons and the, and, the, and to highlight that is this nurse that went to cleveland and had an elevated temperature and they let her go uh that woman should never have been allowed on a plane but anyway it's a charade for many reasons first of all forward temperatures is about the third least accurate in terms of taking temperatures number two it has to be done correctly it has to be placed on the forehead, actually skin touch and passed across the forehead to the temporal artery to get a good measurement. If, if that person has taken an Advil or a leave, which will lower the temperature artificially, if they have thick skin, let's say they work outside, they have thick skin, you'll get a, you'll get a false low temperature reading because the, te the temperature will not be communicated across the skin. If someone's running, for example, in Atlanta airport, which we are doing a lot of, especially from the Southeast, uh, you know, when you get to that point, your temperature will be falsely elevated, and then they can't agree on even what the level is. Doctor, I've only got about 30 seconds left here, but I need to ask you this. i only got about 30 seconds left here. Is the biggest problem here the health care workers themselves are not being well protected? Yes. These patients should be in biocontainment areas, step-up units. They should be regionally provided for. Local hospitals cannot do it. And local hospitals right now are the ones who need the help, and they're not getting the money, nor are they getting the support from the, the CDC. And they, can't, they cannot handle this disease. This, is a, this disease is a monster. Dr. David Vestola, unfortunately, we're out of time, but we will have you back again very soon. We'll talk about this more in depth. We thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. That is one of the biggest issues that we are coming up with today, and the people that we talk to, the health care workers themselves, are not being trained, and they're not being prepared for what's happening. When we come back, telling it like it is and what's really happening in Sayreville, New Jersey.